There was an evil. There was an evil that's invaded our homes. It's invaded our schoolyards. It's, in, it's invaded our businesses. It's invaded our open spaces. I hesitate to bring it up here in church, but here's what it is. Take a look at this. That is Bermuda, Bermuda grass. I don't know why you guys are laughing. It's horrible. So here's some of the things, man. Think about Bermuda grass or Bermuda weed, whatever you want to call it. It, it can grow down these, it can have these roots that can go down. You know what the guy told me? 25 feet. That Bermuda grass, it just comes up. Before you know it, it's kind of all over the place. Comes up and, and takes, over your, takes over your yard. And that's what happens, man, when we start, when we, when we pull away from the Lord. And things that are good, but things that become the ultimate thing become idols. In fact, that is a, a decent definition of idolatry. It is when a good thing becomes the ultimate thing. A family, a marriage, a job, these are good things. But when they become the ultimate thing, they take on the role of idolatry. And then that comes back to bite us. We pay the penalty. We pay the natural consequences for ele elevating things above God. It's not just that God's all mad. He goes, oh, I'm going to zap them. Boom. No, it is the, this is the natural course of things. There is a creator and we are created. When we keep the, the creator as our God, things in our life fall into place. So just as, a, you know, that Bermuda grass, it, like it spreads, it's got deep roots, it's hard, it's hard to uproot. That's what idolatry can be like. Before we know it, it's all wrapped around us and, uh, and it takes an outside agent to come in and get rid of this stuff. We need somebody, we need something to deliver us from the dreaded Bermuda grass and meet quite often in our own lives. We need an outside agent. You may be able to identify a deliverer, somebody that has delivered you from being enslaved. They have delivered you. They're like a deliverer in your life. Hey, you know, like, like who? You know what? Sometimes the people we marry actually save us. Man, I look back, I, I was just so, you, know, just, you guys think I'm crazy now. You should have seen me before I got married. You guys think I'm uncivilized now. You should have seen how, how I was back then. Dude, I've come a long way. Every once in a while, people, you know, I, I will have, and I, I, I take it, right? People come to me like, you know, you use too much humor when you speak. That's like, that, that's inappropriate. I'm like, I'm like, yes, cool. You should have, you'd be proud of me if you knew the things that are in my head that I don't say, right? <laughs> you'd be like, so, hey, so maybe, maybe your husband, maybe your wife saved you. They civilized you. Maybe your children, maybe you, once you got children, man, it saved you. You started, to, you started to leave away the parting. You started to leave this and started to leave that. And you started making God your God. They, they saved you. Hey, maybe AA, maybe NA, maybe Celebrate Recovery saved you. Maybe a gym saved you. You got into it, you started working out, and it, it, man, it just helped you order some things in your life. Hey, so a lot of us have deliverers, people that have saved us from something in our lives. It's true or not? It's true. And many of you that are sitting here right now, and a lot of you guys that are just like really quiet, and you're just like going about your lives, you know what? You are deliverers. You have saved other people. You have delivered them from an evil, a, a, like a Bermuda grass that was entangling them and, and, and wrapping them up. And you just went to them in your weakness and your humility. You brought it up to them and they began to deal with it. Good for you. That's one of the things we're supposed to be. We need a deliverer and we can act as deliverers. The fact is, when we act as deliverers, which is a role we should play, I think we all know then that our help is limited. It's limited. It's limited by how we feel. It's limited maybe by our finances. It's limited by the fact that our, our, our lives are short. We're going to die. We know that our help has a, it has a shelf life and it's limited. I think we know deep in our hearts that we need a deliverer whose shelf life is endless. We need a deliverer whose help is bottomless. We need a deliverer who will not die. Our deliverer is Christ himself. He is our deliverer. And yet he chooses to use us to deliver people in this life.